Releasing tension seems complicated. Yeah, no If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Tension is the enemy, but it's the corollary to that is its removal is complicated because of the interconnected nature of the system. You remove it in one area, it pops up in another. And again, what you're, what you're doing here is you are working against decades of inhibitory counter conditioning. You, look, you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? That's what this comes down to. How badly do you want the results that come from being able to be at ease in social situations, from being able to express yourself clearly and fully and consciously and communicate exactly what you want and use your face, your voice, your body in any combination, in any way you want in order to move things forward to the, to the results that you want with people socially. How badly do you want that? If you want it very badly, you will do whatever the f is necessary and you will do it for as long as it takes to reach that level. If you don't, you're going to half-ass it. You're going to mentally masturbate. You're going to go out and stand in the corner and not do anything. And then be like, I had another week where I didn't do anything. And that, that, that pattern is going to repeat itself ad nauseum until you are dead. That is what is going to happen. Point blank period. For me, I got to a point of emotional leverage internally where I said, Enough. I said, ya basta de tonterias, enough foolishness. I do not care what happens to me. I do not care how humiliated I must become. I don't care how much derision and ridicule I must endure. I do not care how scared I am. Right? If the definition of bravery is a man without fear, I have never met a brave man. I have met courageous people who are able to sack up and take massive action despite every fiber of their being telling them that this is dangerous to me, I shouldn't do this. Because they are using, the people that I've seen do that, they have the ability to enlist their intellect in the process of transcending itself. And they find something inside, this is what the week eight is all about, they find something inside to go into that personal beast mode where they can charge up the hill. They can run into the spears of the enemy. They can, again, go into the unknown where they don't know what's gonna happen. They don't know if the person's gonna laugh at them. They don't know if people are gonna tell them to get the fuck away from me. It doesn't matter. The fear will always be there. It will never, ever go away. But I feel it's far more psychologically damaging to you over time to not step into the, the cumulative effect of not stepping up and facing the fear over and over and over and over again over time that's far more damaging to you than actually just stepping up and doing it because what what are you doing you are now reiterating to yourself i'm the type of person that has an inability to to step up and face my fear this is who i am i am i am a coward i am a person who has who who just sits there and and sucks it up and just deals with it like I'm, I'm a punk ass. I'm a punk ass. That's who I am. That's, that's my identity now. Right? For me, I found emotional leverage because I had a series of terrible relationships. My first love was kidnapped by a, a group of Christian fundamentalists and put in an inpatient re-education facility. I never saw her again. My second girlfriend was like an abusive relationship that lasted for four years. A terrible, terrible relationship. She had huge boobs, though. But terrible fucking relationship. But I stayed with that person for, for four years. Why? Because, quite frankly, I didn't believe that I'd have the ability to find someone of equal or higher value in a short period of time. I'd be cast adrift, and guess what? I was right. And then when she finally did dump my fucking ass and move to Los Angeles ostensibly to pursue her music career, I was cast adrift. I said, you know what? Never again. Never again. I Whatever it takes... For me to transform myself into somebody who know, has the ability to see someone I'm interested in and go out there and like speak to them and competently be able to start that conversation and have a reasonable chance of generating attraction and then introducing an invitation and having a reasonable chance of that being accepted. Not all the time. I don't want to be some superhero with like a, a thousand batting average. Unrealistic. That's not what I want. 
I simply want to be able to feel competent about this. And that is how you get confident. You get confident when you feel you have control, a modicum of control over the situation. How can you feel that you have control over the situation? By attaining an understanding of what's going on inside of you as you try to communicate, number one. Number two, attaining an understanding of the technique involved in these types of internet, whatever those types may be. It could be sales, whatever it is. The, the waypoints, how to, how to move, tech, conversational technique, how to move from waypoint to waypoint. What happens when these contingencies pop up? What are some stratagems to address those? The, that gives you a sense of control. So I'm not just going up and th flinging a bunch of shit at the wall, hoping something sticks, right? The numbers game, the numbers game. Okay, number one, I have control. Number two, I have that emotional leverage. I have that emotional leverage where come hell or high water, I am going to learn this, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And again, like I said, back in the day, I used to go out and, and I'd, I'd go to the same places. And I, I remember very distinctly, one time I'm walking by these girls and they go, oh my God, look, it's that guy. He's getting worse every week. It's that guy. He's getting worse every week. Like again, in my demeanor, my garish attire. And I went home and I thought about that. That, that, that phrase was reverberating in my ears. And I, and I remember looking around and I, I was like, feeling all you know like wanting to cry but like kind of just stunned because here's the thing again what's the alternative what's the alternative continue living as a quote-unquote showed is that the alternative no that is not an alternative and again i remember thinking to myself if this if this takes me down i'm gonna go down with my fingers white knuckle wrapped around his fucking throat right and th that quite frankly everyone that i know that is good at this that has attained competence in this in, in this field of this endeavor has found that personal beast mode inside of them within those moments of anxiety and those moments of confusion they're able to you know what focus that into a, a, a into a, a packet of like a channeled focused energy that enables them to move towards the danger and again, part of it's awareness. And the, the big awareness is, am I, am I in that state? Okay, I'm in that state of anxiety. Okay, too bad, too late for me. Try again next time. The more that, the more that, hap the more that, that happens, the more you're going to be able to recognize it as the onset is happening. And then you get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm going into that state. And then you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm about to go into that state. The, again, the conditions are present that I will typically fall into that paralyzed state of anxiety. I need to take action immediately in order to forestall that, in order to cut it off at the pass. Otherwise, it's gonna be yet another night of standing there, derping, and then going home and saying, well, I didn't really do anything tonight. Because, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, duh, duh, duh. and then is this, again, you, you can see the future. Because it's going to be the same thing every time. So yes, it is complicated. Yes, it does require a bit of analysis. Not during, not as you're doing it, after the fact and before you go out. Again, at the end of every program, I ask the students, I say, okay, what were your best interactions tonight? In those interactions, what about your behavior do you feel contributed to, to it being a positive outcome? Okay, that's great. Number one, understandings taken in. Number two, in the interactions that didn't go so well, what do you think you might have done differently in order to get a better reaction should this similar situation arise in the future? Okay, and number three, what are your biggest takeaways from the night and what do you want to work on going forward? So again, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. You know, the intellectual functions, the, the mind, it, it, it's not some villain. I mean, yes, it has villainous characteristics. It, it, it creates all this judgment that triggers the guilt, the shame, the potential fear around approaching. It, it, it does all that, yes. But it can also analyze. It can observe. It can remember. It can interpret. It can plan for the future. Uh, again, as I said, yes, it's complicated, but that's what you have a brain for, right? You, you can self-reflect. You can start to make you know, make decisive, take decisive actions. Because again, once you, once you have these awarenesses of what's going on when you try to communicate, once you have these awarenesses of, of various techniques, 
at that point, you're, you're not this, like, victim anymore. You're not this, like, pathetic victim of my fucking history and the conditioning anymore. I'm at the mercy of the conditioning. This hapless imbecile who's, like, right, wallowing around in confusion and fear. Like, no. Now you have these awarenesses. So now you can start to take positive, concerted actions towards letting them go. Right, because that's that's really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about eradicating tension or, or blasting it into oblivion. Like, like no, it's simply it's, it's, don't hold on to it. Like, don't hold on to this as necessary for your survival, because that's quite frankly what's going on. You know, you know, you you've deemed these these tension entanglements, as we call them, to be useful and necessary for your survival for so long that now you couldn't you can't even imagine what it would be like to get rid of them and then of course in many cases you're not probably not even aware of them like some people someone not, not on this on this program is likely not even aware of it they're, they're likely not even aware of it all they know is they go out and they can't do anything and, and it's not even verbalized they're just like i'm out with my friends Alcohol, alcohol, friend, <laughs> oh, the, the sports is on, the sports, the sports, fuck yeah, the sports, okay, okay let's go home guys, and then again, there's this vague sense of disquiet that they didn't approach, like they don't even know they wanted to approach. Because their whole life is probably like football and fucking getting drunk. Like again, a lot of my personal friends are like are like this. That's that's literally they're not even aware. They don't give a shit. They don't care. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's like that meme with the dog and the burning house. It's fine. This is fine. This is fine. You on the other hand, you've been like, no, it's not fucking fine. Okay, it's not. That's why you're here. So you know, kudos on that. You know, you're like, you know what? This this needs to be rectified somehow. I'm gonna enlist this this old weirdo who dedicated his life to it, and maybe he'll give me a couple pointers, and and I can kind of navigate this this labyrinth of energies, the intellect, the emotional process, intuition, my voice, my like, I'll, I'll somehow again these sort of like complementary yet sometimes at odds with one another energies that are all tangled up. Like again, this is a confusing labyrinth for many people. My goal here is to, my, my overarching purpose, in fact, in life, is to, by studying this, come to a better understanding of myself, and in the process, learn how to transfer that to other people. As knowledge, which then you can take out and per, into the performance realm and transform into knowing. And then hell, at that point, you can, you can give the knowledge to others. But my point, my goal here is to, again, through through the, the material, through these like various missions that we do on this mentoring, give you the tools that you need to chip away at these various tensions for as long as you as as long as you feel is beneficial. Right? You could keep doing this for the rest of your life. But again, when you walk away from this program, you will have these understandings. You will have these nuanced understandings of your communication system, not just as this generalized gestalt, but rather as this system. And again, understanding this system even as somebody who had been very, very successful at this stuff for like 16 years before I even started developing it or investigating it, understanding the system has improved my understanding of my communication system dramatically and continues to inform my interactions and will do so for the rest of my life. So that's my goal, not to, not to fix you necessarily in eight weeks. That's not realistic because like we said, it took decades to install these, these tensions and these, these various inhibitions. So, but number one, give you an awareness and like i always say there's five things that you got to understand in order to five concepts you have to understand and act on to improve your charisma number one what's the vision that you want for your life what are the results you want to have number two what are the, the realistic demands that are going to be put upon you in a performance situation if you want to get those results again hey what's up I like your dog no not going to cut it right so understand the demands number three What's going on in the environment that's that's affecting that? Again, like decorum, social social situations. Number four, how is your negative counter conditioning inhibiting you from behaving in the way that would get those results? And then number five, what to be done about it. So those last two, 
how are the inhibitions affecting you? How, are, how is the counter conditioning inhibiting you from taking the actions that are necessary to get the results you want? That's what we investigate here on this program. And then number five, what to be done about all of it? Well, we, exer we, we isolate these various energies. We exercise them individually to strengthen them. And then we reintegrate them into a more completely realized whole instrument. And then going forward, you have the understandings necessary and you have now the power to work on this stuff going forward for as long as you want for the rest of your life. That's my goal. You know, yeah, again, at the end of the eight weeks, you're, a lot of people, they come out and they're, they're certainly, again, you can tell they've done the work. Like they're a lot more expressive. They're a lot more, uh, a lot less facial armoring. They have a lot more access to in, intuition in many cases. You know, whatever their vocal tonality is more varied, less monotonous. All of those things are, can be can be noticed at the end of the eight weeks, but really it's just a start. You know what I mean? Like again, like I said, it took decades to put this stuff in. It's going to take a while to unwire it too. But you have the understandings, and then you have the tools to actually work on that going forward. Jeffy.